I'm James Deemer, the audio nomad, and we are in Zhongshan, China, at the Kiwi Ears manufacturing facility. It's really a laboratory. This place is so clean, you could eat off the floor. It's incredibly, incredibly high tech. And these people who work here are masters of the craft at making in-ear monitors. Let's dig in a little deeper and find out how a Kiwi Ears in-ear monitor is manufactured. So many of the Kiwi Ears in-ear monitor shells are 3D printed. And they'll, they're printed in a, in a resin printer that looks like this, which uses uh, light-based printing with a, uh, a bath of resin. The, the, each layer gets printed. It's a very, very thin layer. Uh, and the layers get printed and the the plate that holds the shell gets dipped in and out of the bath, and that process keeps happening until you have a complete shell. And then what happens is those shells go into a stage, multi-stage uh, cleaning. This is probably, I'm guessing, like the first stage, so you can see They'll, they'll wash the resin off and then they'll wash it off again. And then it will go through a series of these vibrating cleaners until eventually you have a very, very, very clean shell. And then they'll get placed in these um, machines here which use uh, a light, UV light to cure the shell until it is hard. And then the final product comes out looking like looking like this you can see uh, now these shells will get assembled with the drivers and the faceplate they'll get tested the faceplate will get put on and then they'll get cleaned and finished they'll get polished and finished some kiwi ears iems are actually the shells are made by hand. It's, an, it's the old school way of making shells, like the orchestra light. And this gentleman right here is painstakingly making molds that uh, this is the way before 3D printers, shells were made where it's a silicone mold and the resin gets poured in and hardened and then separated so they can use these molds over and over. And uh, it's a different method it's very cool to see. And you can see actually, if we come down here, these are the uh, old mold style of IEM manufacturing. Okay, how about we go to the, let's go to the room where they're actually installing the drivers and testing the drivers. So you can see we've got three gentlemen here. It's a Saturday, so I think maybe it's a slower work day, but um, this is a fairly typical, fairly typical operation where this gentleman is soldering two pin connectors onto dynamic drivers. And he'll do a tray of, it looks like there's probably a hundred units at one time. So it's, it's work that requires a very steady hand and really good soldering skills. And then essentially what happens is once the driver configurations have been assembled, this is actually pretty cool. This is a, this is a tray that has orchestra light pre-assemblies or sub-assemblies. So there are eight drivers and their eight all balanced armature drivers and their crossovers ready to get fully tested. So if we walk over here, this gentleman is actually testing uh, IEMs that have the assemblies already put in the shells and he's making sure that they, that they're, that the the frequency response is correct and that the left and right match each other and that the distortion level is at or below our specified tolerances. So 
it's something that um, we take great pride in making sure everything matches and sounds up to snuff. Okay, so we're gonna walk over here and we'll see what this woman is doing is taking sub-assemblies, which are, as we've noted, uh, either all balanced armature, dynamic driver, or a combination of BA and dynamic driver and crossovers, and putting them inside the shells. This is a pretty complicated job because there's a lot of small parts and it takes steady hand and a lot of skill to be able to assemble these properly without damaging any of the internal components. Um, one thing that you'll notice is they're using adhesive, which is ultraviolet sensitive. So they put the adhesive on and then they shine a UV light onto the surface that they've just adhered and that's what cures the parts together. Pretty cool. Okay, and over here, this woman is actually putting face plates onto, or what is this, orchestra light? Oh, quartet, this is a quartet. So these are quartet shells. This is pretty interesting. So these are, these are um, Kiwi Ears quartets. And you can see that they are, they are, it's, it's a, they're paired together. And it's a unit that's ready to be, it's been tested and fully assembled, but it has no faceplate on it. So what this woman is doing is putting face plates on the quartet and then adhering it with ultraviolet adhesive. And so she's using a very small syringe to apply that adhesive so that she gets the right amount of adhesive on, but not too much. And then once that's done, we have something that looks like, something that looks like this. But you can see the faceplate and the rest of the shell needs to be polished and finished. Oh, here's the, here's a whole bunch of faceplates. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Okay, so this is where, once the faceplate has been, put on the shell and all of the, well, once all the components have been put inside the shell and thoroughly tested, passed quality control, and the faceplate has been adhered to the shell, they need to be finished. So this gentleman is making sure that the faceplate and the shell blend perfectly together so that it's almost seamless. And this also requires a great amount of skill. So he's using a rotary tool like a Dremel tool to shave down the excess faceplate until it matches the shell perfectly. And he's using a, a high grit sanding flapper to bring that down. So this is the room where the, the finishing process happens. It's an ultraviolet curing station but they first paint a layer of a lacquer on the shell, which requires a great amount of skill and detail because they have to remove any sort of imperfection that might live on the outside of the shell. And then we have these curing boxes up here. So I would imagine once the shells have finished drying on the spinny thing, then they'll go into the curing ovens and they will cure. And then the end result is you get something that is quite beautiful, shiny and perfect. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And there you have it. That's a tour of the Kiwi Ears 
laboratory where if you have a set of Kiwi ears, most likely they were made in this facility. And if you don't, but you're hoping to get a set, this is where they're made. And I can tell you, they're made by people who care about their craft and they're very, very good at what they do. And you can see this is the room that houses the finished product, the, the, the final samples, as it were. Thanks for coming along on this tour. And if this is the kind of content that you like to see, let me know. If there's anything else that you wanna see uh, from the Chinese side of things, happy to make more content. Thanks so much for watching. I'm James Dean with the Audio Nomad. This video is brought to you by linsoul.com. Linsoul sells IEMs, headphones, amplifiers, digital to analog converters, cables, really just about anything you could want for personal hi-fi or even home hi-fi. Their prices are great, the quality is exceptional, and their customer service is really second to none. Check them out in the link below.